go into Google, we'll search SDN downloads, and we'll see the NetWeaver main releases. There's a couple of options available. Um, we're going to download the 32-bit because that's what my uh, machine supports. But if you have a 64-bit machine, feel free to download that. This will include ABAP Webdin Pro, and it does require the JRE. So if you don't have the Java uh, runtime environment yet, you'll want to uh, download that. You can find that on CNET or several other websites. So you can see the requirements, but we're going to go ahead and download. If you don't have an account, you will have to create an SDN account. It's free. It just takes a couple of seconds. But I assume most of you already have an account, so just log in before you do download that. I am using VMware. Uh, it's a lot easier to have a virtual machine just in case something goes wrong. Um, plus, it's nice to start out with a fresh installation. So Let's begin. So first, we're going to uh, add the loopback adapter. We go into uh, command prompt as administrator, type hdwwiz.exe. That will get us to the add new hardware wizard. We're going to manually select uh, network adapters. Microsoft. And there's the loopback adapter. Take a second to let that load. All right, as soon as we're done with that, we are actually going to go change the uh, static IP address. Right now, it's always defaults as automatically assign it IP address. We don't want that. So you get into your network properties, find the adapter that we just added. There it is properties. We're going to use 10, 10, 0, 10. Subnet mask 255, 255, 255, 0. Perfect. Now we're going to go into our Windows host file. And again, we'll want to run this as administrator as well. So we'll go back down, search for Notepad, right click, run as administrator. Once we're in Notepad, we're just going to find the host file, and it's in Windows. System32. Drivers, etc. And then we don't see it, but that's because we're looking for text files. Drop that down. We can see the host file. We can see all the, everything is commented out right now. So we're going to add our 10.10. .10 dot zero dot ten we'll call that netweaver save that all right we're done with that all right so we have the milestone we downloaded vmware we installed the java runtime environment creating an sdn account if we didn't already have one then we download both the developer edition part one and two at, and then we uh, extracted those using winrar so as i mentioned once those are both downloaded, you want to extract those into the same folder. You, know, you can use WinWar to do that. I've already done that, so now I'm going to go right into uh, NetWeaver Installation Master and find SAP Install. I'm going to allow the private network to have access as well. I don't know if you need to do this, but I'm going to do that. This is where most of the waiting begins. I did cut all, most of it out for your convenience, but uh, do prepare to be patient. So we'll go to SAP Application Server ABAP, Max DB, Central System. Click on that next. All right, so we did that first part. It's now going to want to restart our computer before we can continue. So we'll let that do that for us. All right, we're back. Logging back into this G Web, you can see the installation starts automatically for us. Allowing access again to the private networks. All right. 
All right, so we have an error. I actually did this on purpose. I wanted you to see that if the Windows system uh, is longer than 13 characters, it will fail on you. So I'll show you how to edit that real quick. Not a big deal. Go into computer, properties. And you can see there's a change settings there right next to the computer name. We'll click change. And make sure you're not just changing the uh, the description you want to change the computer name so once we have that just call my SAP PC I will have to restart my computer quick do that so here's my folder open it back up again SAP install Now, if you didn't have that uh, the computer name error like I did before, uh, you won't have this pop up here where you're either creating a new option or continuing. We're going to continue. Accept the user license. Now we're going to select. Uh, the directory where our JRE is installed. So typically it goes into program files, Java, and then we'll select uh, the JRE 7 folder. And we'll create a master password. And please re make sure you write this down or remember it. You will need this absolutely uh, later in this process. All right, so my computer didn't make some of the uh, did not meet some of the prerequisites. I'm just going to click cancel and go ahead and continue, and then cross my fingers and hope for the best. <laughs> um, we're not going to check anything here. It's pretty much saying if you check something, if you want to change the setting, but everything looks good to us, so we're going to leave it all the same. Click next, and here is where the waiting really begins. Honestly. Um, this took me eight hours on my virtual machine. I only had uh, two gigabytes of RAM allocated to it, but uh, it can take a long time. I read in the SDN that some, some people wait upwards of 16 hours. So we're at milestone two. We installed the loop at network adapter, uh, added its properties to include a uh, new static IP address, updated the Windows host file to include that address, verified the computer name was less than 14 characters, and started the SAP install. So, so now that we uh, we installed it, you can see the SAP created a few new user accounts for us. So we're going to uh, switch user and go in as SAP admin. Then we're going to go into the SAP management console. You should see that icon on your desktop. We're going to drop down as NSP and we're going to click start. Keep the time timeout period as default, 300. And we'll enter the password that we uh, put in during our installation. And you'll watch here the little light should turn green once the system's up. All right, we're green. So I'm going to switch back to my user. There's a directory where I extracted uh, both part one and two again. This time I'm going to go back in and go under GUI and install the GUI. Uh, that was not installed in our the previous steps. So we're going to install this. Next. We're going to check the top box of this tree, and you can see everything that it's including. The GUI suite, the logon pad. I'll show you guys how to set that up in a bit, too. So this is a, a much quicker installation. Fast forward that for you. So now you can see we have the SAP logon uh, shortcut on our desktop. So we can close this and jump right into that. Oh, missed it. There we go. So we're going to right click, create new entry. I will create the description for this. I'm going to call it My GUI. The application server should be localhost. 
instant number is always 00, zero and NSP for the developer edition. So once we have that, we'll double click on it and uh, we'll log in. As you might ask, as I did, is what's the initial password? So we can go in the documentation here and actually find that. If you click on create BC user, you'll see that it gives us um, the DDIC is the user and the, provides the password. We'll type that in. Alright. Alright, so we're actually inside SAP. So I'm going to type in SC80, the ABAP Workbench transaction. And I'm going to go down into uh, WebZim Pro components. And just so you don't get frustrated when you find this on your own, you'll notice that this user doesn't have permissions to do much. So I'm trying to create a, a new Webden Pro component here, a custom component, hence the Z. And you'll see I get an error. So we're going to create a user that actually has permissions to do just that. So we'll go slash in to back out here. SU01 and you can type in the name of the user uh, you want to create here. So I'm just going to type username for sake of demo. You can see you can add uh, you know, their address and information. Uh, it's not required. The important part here is that under Profiles tab, you want to say SAP underscore all. Obviously, you'd only do this in a development environment, but it gets you past all of the uh, authorization frustrations. Um, you want to create an initial password as well, so if you go to the Log on Data tab, you can type in, uh, you have to do it twice to make sure you have the, uh, you're consistent. Once you have that, you save, and you created your new user. So. The, you can log in with username the next time you go into the GUI and you'll be all set. So you see we're at uh, milestone 3. We continue the SAP installation, uh, we created the master password, started phase 1 through 24, waited a long time, set up our system via MMC, installed the SAP GUI, and created a new system entry in the SAP logon. So thank you for your time. Uh, hope that saved you some, some frustration.